Hey doodly bugs, it's Miss Pedersen. I am so excited to continue to talk to you about poetry. We're gonna continue to learn what good readers and writers of poetry do. And last week, I'm just gonna remind you that we talked about how poetry breaks the rules of writing. That's why Miss Pedersen thinks it's so much fun. And you all hopefully had a chance to use your senses to help you come up with some describing words or pick a topic and generate a whole bunch of words about that topic. Um, that's the first thing good poets do is they think of ideas and get words down on the paper. Now, today I'm first going to talk to you about what good readers of poetry do. There's three big things. Um, we're going to learn those three big things that good readers of poetry do. You're going to listen to two poems and you're going to practice doing those things. I'm going to talk about the activities that are attached to your learning map. And then I'm going to talk to you about writing poetry. Okay, so good readers of poetry. Are you ready? Good readers of poetry, look for meaning. Okay, this first picture... Does anyone remember what it's called, what your background knowledge is called, or all the things you know? What is that called? It's your schema. It's your schema. You're going to use your schema and what you read to make meaning, to make connections. Okay, the second thing good readers of poetry do is they listen for sounds. So, Sometimes poetry um, has rhyming words and you can listen for that. But if it doesn't, not all poetry has to rhyme uh, or have rhyming words, but usually poets follow a pattern or there's a rhythm. So we're gonna listen for that. Okay, the last thing good readers of poetry do is they visualize the words. So they make a picture in their mind. Now, this is part of the reason that last week I had you do this senses activity. If you listened carefully to things that you saw and heard and smelled and touched, it can help you write uh, something descriptive that will help your reader visualize. Okay, so let's practice these things. We're going to practice looking for meaning, listening for sound, and making a picture in our mind. I'm going to read you two poems. And I'm going to read from this book, Out of Wonder. And remember, it's poems celebrating poets. Okay? Um, and you'll notice that the first poem that I chose, the author definitely used their senses to help them describe. So I want you to listen for those words. Um, I also want you to listen for things that are already in your schema that will help you make meaning. Okay, so this poem is written by Marjorie Wentworth, but it's celebrating the poet Billy Collins, and it's called How Billy Collins Writes a Poem. When you first wake up, notice how your mother's voice calling you to breakfast sounds like a fire alarm. Watch the steam rising off your oatmeal like tiny clouds and guess where it goes. Pay attention to the smallest things. A fly buzzing near the kitchen window, bright rocks in the driveway, the handful of marbles in your pocket, the sound they make when you walk. Imagine that the leaves spinning in the wind on the walk to school are alien ships and that barking dogs belong to a prince. At night, when the stars seem close, reach up and grab some. Our lives are made from these things and when you describe them, you discover magic. It's the way your pen becomes a wand in your hand and this may be the only thing you need to know. So I hope you heard places where the author used her senses. 
I also hope you heard some things that are already in your schema. So when uh, the author described um, your mom's voice like a fire alarm, we have all heard a fire alarm. We know what that sounds like. So we know that that was, they wanted them down at breakfast, right? I also really loved how she said, the pen becomes a wand. So yeah, poetry really is, to me, it's magic. Okay, I have one more, and this is also going to um, use senses. So I want you to listen for the author using their senses. I want you to try to make meaning, listen for sound, visualize the words. Okay, but I'm going to show you the picture. It's called For Our Children's Children, and it's celebrating Chief Dan George, but the author is Chris Colderly. Maybe I'll do this. Here you go. Greet the new day like a stranger entering it for the first time. Listen to the rivers, the raven's song, the woodpecker's knock, and your beating heart. Walk softly, mind the leaves dancing in shaky hands of an old maple. Let the shadows of drifting clouds warm your cheek and whisper softly, Share the earth with all creatures. Love them and they will love you back. And I'm just going to show you this poem because the pattern that it follows is there's four lines together in each stanza. So there's four, 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 four. Um, so those were two poems that hopefully you were able to visualize what the author was describing. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about the two activities that are attached to your learning map. The first is a, an activity where you're, it's going to help you to visualize. So there's a poem written by Shel Silverstein. You're going to read that poem. It's a little bit silly. Um, and that's okay. Your picture can be silly too. You're going to try to draw all the details that are described in that poem. Okay, so the first activity is to practice that visualizing, but to get it on paper. Draw the picture. The second activity that you can do um, is finding synonyms or words that mean something similar. So sometimes um, poets want to make their writing exciting um, and they may not want to use the same word or they may want, want to use a word that fits or rhymes or they have to be creative with their words. So we're going to try to come up with words that mean similar things. I'm going to show you how to do it. So my word today is sleep. So there's a word at the top on your page, and then you're going to try to come up with four things that mean something similar. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So I may say, here's my first word, nap. I may use the word nap instead of sleep when I'm writing, especially if you're thinking maybe if I'm trying to make my words rhyme, I want to be able to think of more words than just that one. Hmm, ooh, I've got a good one. You may or may not know this word. E makes O say its name. D O Z. That word is doze. Yeah, when you doze off, it means you're falling asleep. Okay, hmm, ooh, this is another word I might use. Now remember, it's similar to sleep, it doesn't mean the same thing, and that's okay. This word is a compound word. It's daydream. Daydream. Hmm. And one more. Ooh. Okay. If I'm writing a poem about an animal and the animal goes to sleep for a long time because it's winter. Uh-huh. Do you know what the word is? Hibernate. Okay, so four words that mean something similar to sleep could be nap, doze, daydream, or hibernate. Now, as a poet, I'll have a resource of words to use when I'm writing. I gave you different words on your sheet. Okay, last thing, if you want to try writing some poetry this week, oh my gosh, I would love to see it. 
I took my activity from um, using my senses. Well, we used four of our five senses. And then I wrote a poem using, um, using my ideas from that, okay? And remember, there's no rules. So my poem is called Warm and Happy, okay? Outside, sunny and bright. Laying down, looking up, lazing, dazing, gazing at the wind blowing the trees, at the clouds moving across the sky. And I lay down and I look up and I feel warm and happy. So that's something Miss Pedersen wrote. And I tried to use my senses to describe how I was feeling. You may have noticed that I included some rhyming words. So this week, um, I want you to either listen to poetry or create your own poetry or have some fun playing with words. Okay, have a great week and I will talk to you soon. Love you doodly bugs.